Dial, thanks so much for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. Really excited to, to talk a little bit about uh, Cohere Health. Yeah, exactly. So Cohere Health, you guys are working on the digital transformation for a major part of the healthcare industry that definitely needs disruption. So talk about Cohere Health and what you guys do. Yeah, so cool here um, uh, started with uh, the express intention to help patients get uh, more optimal care sooner. And, and when I say more optimal, there's a lot of things that come into that. So is it <clears throat> is it the right level of care, quality of care, and cost of care um, that, that that patient should be getting at any given time? Um, and so when we started when we started looking at this space, uh, one of the biggest impediments that we ran into was helping physicians better serve their patients to begin with. So there's a lot of impediments in the way of uh, practicing physicians, um, which is helping their patients get the right care. So it starts with a conversation that the physician has with their insurance company. And uh, even in this day of you know, modern technology and machine learning that we'll, we'll talk about, um, that conversation that a clinician's office is having with the insurance company is happening usually on the phone, an analog device, or a fax machine. And um, they're exchanging really sensitive clinical information over those two mediums about 60% of the time. There's, there's very little automation or interoperability uh, between your, your typical physician's office and, and an insurance company. And so Cohere have come to try and solve that problem first, right? Because if you don't have satisfied physicians, you're not gonna, they're not gonna be able to give the best care they can to the patients. And so, what we did was we we aggressively digitized this entire um, interaction. So, um, you know, in some interactions, we have um, connections directly into the electronic medical record. So the physician doesn't have to go to another system or interact with a fax machine or some other device in their office. They're just using the terminal that they're used to using when they're when they're treating patients. And we're able to get the order and interact with the insurance company and get an approval for that order back as quick as possible. Um, and so that's the ideal situation. Not every, not every clinical practice has you know, electronic medical records that can support these types of interactions. So we also have you know, a web portal that physicians can come to. And how that's different is it's a, a web portal that was created in the last couple of years with modern web technology. It doesn't look like Windows 95, which is pretty common in healthcare. Um, and so we, we created this web portal that is, is you know, using modern user experience and things you'd find in a typical consumer setting. And um, physicians actually like using it. They're able to um, populate the clinical information that, uh, the, that the insurance company demands in order for them to make um, a medical necessity de decision. And we give them an instantaneous response 90% of the time. So when a physician uses our portal, it's guiding them to the most effective, cost-effective and, um, and clinically appropriate care and so by the time they click submit, which is a couple of minutes typically, um, that, that is going to get instantly adjudicated because we, again, have digitized all the decision making, right? So we've digitized the front end and then we looked at the, we looked at the back end of, you know, we have typically in most insurance plans, there's hundreds if not thousands of clinicians that are taking these requests off a of fax machine and reading them and then turning around a decision. That takes typically seven to 14 days in a lot of scenarios we can do that instantaneously because what we did was we took all the clinical guidelines that exist and there are a mountain of these, right? So there's clinical guidelines that CMS at the federal level set, each individual state has their own guidelines as well. And then individual commercial payers have their own guidelines. And it's just an impossible web of rules um, for a physician to understand in a given context. And so what we've done is we digitized all of those, like, really it looks like boolean logic for the most part and then we we use the digital information stream coming in from the um, from the front end and then just turn around those decisions um, instantaneously um that's that's kind of where we've gotten to today right we're 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 at scale so we're we're live in all 50 states there's about 25,000 physician practices use their software every single day um and we manage the care of about um about 5 million lives so um so we, we have demonstrably changed uh, the experience of not only the provider, but of these patients. Um, 
uh, in a positive way. So, you know, typically I, I mentioned that when, it, when a lot of humans and fax machines are involved, it takes about seven days, seven to 14 days to turn this around. Well, when we look at our patient population, we can see this in the claims data that comes back. Patients that, that have their authorization requests flow through Cohere, they are being scheduled for service on average four days sooner. Um, and that's, that's, a, that's a real important element of this because you know, if you're a primary caregiver and you have to go see your physician and come back seven days later for the service after you saw them in the first place, well, that means you're gonna to have to take, you know, either time off work or find other, find other care arrangements for your loved ones. And we think it's, you know, these type of administrative delays that have been baked into the process due to manual, manual handling um, causes health equity problems. People that can't afford to take days off work or find other care arrangements. We think, we think we're, we're helping them. And, and, and then just, you know, patients who are in chronic pain. I feel, I feel it's kind of cruel and unusual to ask someone to go home and wait seven days for an administrative check from your um, insurance company. And so that's the good we're doing in the world and we're doing it at scale. Yeah, and it's, it, when I hear the word fax machine, that's still part of the process, it just blows my mind. It's just like, okay, digital transformation needs to happen in healthcare and Cohere is making that happen. So talk about your background, like what, you know, how did you get involved with the company? Yeah, so um, my background, so I've been involved in, in health technology for, for about 10 years. Um, my prior role, I was chief technology officer at a company um, that was, uh, it was, it was much more digitally focused. So we were actually looking at the uh, genetic sequence of, of uh, cancer tumors. And um, we were using that to help patients find um, uh, more recently uh, targeted therapies that are, had been approved um, the target the specific mutations in their in their genome or in the genome of the cancer. Um, and and you know that was that was an interesting world to live in because it's high technology, right? This is the most advanced drugs that you can imagine. And the sequencing technology didn't exist 20 years ago, right? So I, we were really at the at the at the bleeding edge of of, of kind of healthcare technology. But when it came to actually putting that into action um, at scale, you ran into a lot of roadblocks, the same roadblocks that all of healthcare is uh, experiencing. Is that, sure, here in Boston, you have MGH that can afford to have these laboratories, you can have the you know, physicians that are uh, engaging in research at the, at the real bleeding edge, um, but that's not the common experience of most healthcare participants, right? Um, and so what we found was that, sure, there was pockets of, of real advancement in, in cancer care, right? Patients were having curative effects from finding the right therapy at the right time, but it wasn't geographically dispersed. It was MD Anderson in, in, in Texas. It was MGH in Boston and Dana-Farber in Boston. Um, uh, and so I felt that that was like if we're going to actually make a real impact in, in clinical care, it has to be ubiquitous. And so when I, when I started looking at um, uh, kind of my next opportunity, Cohere came along and theirs was a mission to really align clinical care um, uh, along evidence-based guidelines, right? So we have all these guidelines, we're able to codify them, right? And then we're able to use the pointy end of the stick of the insurance company's payment incentive to make sure that they're followed. And I thought that that is a fantastic um, avenue to, to democratize broadly newer technology, newer approaches in healthcare. And it's, it's, not, even, it's not only like complex you know, cancer therapies, but there's, there's a million and one small little innovations that happen every single day in healthcare that aren't widely distributed. And so I felt Cohere was, was the technology platform that, that could actually disseminate new ideas in healthcare broadly because it's in every single physician's office that has to deal with the patient population that we're, that we're helping. So um, that was the kind of impetus for me to, to kind of move and consider this opportunity. All right, so talk about the team. Obviously this is an incredibly complex problem to solve. So you need a really, really smart team to address these challenges. So talk about how the team is organized. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, it's a very complex field. And so we need a lot of different, uh, different uh, skill sets to, uh, to solve challenges here. Um, so we're about 500 people. 
and uh, that is split ac across those that um, you know deal with the the physician practices every single day. And so that's a lot of people um, answering phones if there's any issues with cases um, or dealing with the still few faxes that we uh, that we receive today. Um, we have a pretty large clinical team. We've got 50 nurses um, and about and about 20 uh, uh, MDs on staff, and they are dealing with all the cases that um, don't necessarily meet the perfect articulation of the guidelines, but still require clinical judgment to um, to uh, create an approval. Um, and then more on the technology side, um, we've about uh, 40 software engineers of varying different uh, skill sets uh, from application developers um, that are building tools that physicians use every day to people working on clinical intelligence. And, um, and then we have a data science and machine learning team as well. Um, uh, we have a large product function that, um, that are responsible for making the tools that we develop the most user-friendly and effective uh, tools in the marketplace. Um, and, uh, and then we have, we have a, a pretty strong team um, involved in development of clinical uh, programs. So these are people that are reading literature, that are finding the um, best of breed ways to treat patients and, uh, and all the, uh, the kind of new advancements that, that aren't necessarily um, being taught in med school today. Um, so, so the clinical programs team are, are really important for, um, for helping uh, patients get uh, newer and, uh, and more effective treatments. Now, I assume you're hiring for all those different functional areas that you just outlined? Absolutely. Yeah. I don't think there's a single department in the company that, um, that hasn't uh, open, open positions. Um, and, and really, that's the story of Cohere, right? We've, uh, we've been an incredible growth uh, uh, journey. So a little over two years ago, I joined the company. I think it was the 10th employee, as I said, or about 500 people now. Um, and we have very quickly doubled um, uh, almost, almost every six months uh, 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 to get to where we are today. And we are, we are not, we're not slowing down. So you know, we, we've been really successful um, with our first customer going into all 50 states. We're now broadening the, the disease areas that we're focusing on. So we're building a, a, a cardiology program and an oncology program. Um, uh, and we're also interacting with new customers as well. So all of that requires um, a pretty significant team uh, with uh, some pretty impressive uh, skill sets. So once someone does join the team, what's it like working there? What's the day-to-day -day culture like? Yeah, so I'll talk a little bit about, about kind of the, the, the things that I think make working here really, really, uh, you know, interesting. Um, the problems that we're working on are, are truly, um, they're difficult and hard problems to solve, whether it's digitization of a pretty entrenched uh, industry like healthcare, or it's trying to understand the signal from the noise in, um, in the different clinical, um, clinical activity that's coming to us coming to us, right? So physicians are free to make decisions about how to treat their patients. And, you know, a lot of the time they are doing the right thing, right? Some of the times that they're just not aware of more modern ways to treat their patient populations. Um, and then uh, other times there's, there's actually true innovation in how, how physicians practice medicine. And we want to be able to distinguish what is kind of willful blindness and what is innovative practice. And that takes data scientists to work on, work on the data stream that's coming in on that. It takes people with rich and deep clinical expertise to actually understand what is novel and, you know, uh, uh, an effective way to treat something and what is kind of not a novel way to do it and probably is ill-advised, right? Um, so the, the, the problems that we work on are, are really, really interesting. And it's a collaborative atmosphere where, you know, it's, it's not just, you know, engineers working in a corner um, or data scientists looking at data in isolation to people who are working on clinical programs. It, it really, you need a, a, a group effort. And we, we go to great pains to create um, cross-functional teams. And that means everyone from someone answering the phone um, in, our, in our service operations center um, uh, can be impacted by software that an engineer creates that changes how volume um, is, is routed in the call center. 
to someone who's running a clinical program and changes a rule. And so having that cross collaboration between all members is essential to actually um, uh, driving these programs forward. So it's, it's, it's deep and interesting problems and it's, it's a, a rich collaboration to try, and, to try and solve them. So the job market's very active out there. There's lots of opportunities for people to explore. So that's a good thing. So why is now the ideal time to join Cohere Health? Well, you know, I think I think if you ask me in a couple of years' time, I'll probably say something similar, right? Um, every year that goes by, we're kind of we, we solved the low-hanging fruit that was available at that time, right? So every you know, for us to advance in terms of helping patients get more effective care, we have to go much, much, much more deeper into the understanding of the data using machine learning to interpret notes, using um, you know, PhDs to go out and research new programs. Um, and so every year, the problems that we work on, just we get deeper on them, right? And so um, the reason why now is the right time is, is that a lot of the problems we've already solved are, are, are kind of easy for us to solve now. And we need more people now to kind of go deeper and actually solve the, the kind of really unique problems that only occur in like a fraction of 1% of the, of the population. But you know what, we can learn things from that tiny, tiny population that might be more applicable to a different, a, a wider cohort. And that's the type of interaction that we're constantly uh, battling with. Is there, is there small signals that are, um, that are driving better clinical outcomes that we can take and, and, uh, and expand into guidelines and then codify them into whole programs? Um, and so that's now the time is ripe because, because we have a lot of opportunity, we solve a lot of basic problems, and now we're going to go deeper and solve some of the, some of the more challenging ones. Well, if you are interested in exploring opportunities at Cohere Health, you need to go to their company page on VentureFizz, which has all their listings. Go to VentureFizz.com slash Cohere hyphen health, and you'll see all their listings there. Now, thanks so much for taking the time to walk us through all the great things happening at the company. Thank you, Keith. I appreciate it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. At VentureFizz, our mission is to share the stories of companies, their people, and culture. So if you're interested in more interviews with founders and executives in the tech industry, make sure you click on the subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching.